It's now four years ago that I was standing here and told you about the ambitious plan to prepare a fresh text of the Greek New Testament at Tyndale House. And rather optimistically, I predicted then that in 18 months' time, a provisional draft text would be ready for perusal. As with many academic forecasts, predictions, and future scenarios, or opinion polls for that matter, I was proven wrong. It has taken us more than twice as long. But by God's grace and the warden's patience, we reached an, uh, a milestone, important milestone earlier in the week. We sent out a review edition of the whole Greek New Testament, still rough at a few places, to a group of well over two dozen peer reviewers. It has been a privilege to work on this project, especially since it has grown more and more into an enterprise in which people with different skill sets got involved in all sorts of specialist subdisciplines. I would like to mention some of them. Firstly, our warden, now Pete Williams himself. You may have noticed that he has not published a vast amount of scholarship over the last couple of years or so. I am entirely responsible. <laughs> Self-sacrificially, he gave most of whatever little research time he has to the bigger Tindo House project. And in addition, he helped me out by taking over the project management. Um, Peter had. Um, deserves a special heads up too. He was with us still last year and has been a constant soundboard and critical voice. His insights have been invaluable. A special mention need to be made of Patrick James, a classicist who had been working on the Cambridge Greek Dictionary project and is one of the very few persons who knows the historical and philological detail of Greek. Uh, Pete Myers has been uh, pressing us to stick to the deadlines we promised our reviewers and there are various groups of students students, scholars, who were called uh, summer interns at one point. Uh, we have a junior, a junior research fellow at Tino House, Peter Malik, who helped me to get the paragraphing in the right shape. And then there have been co-workers and volunteers off-site, people who have freely shared their research and insights. This has not been a single person project and not even a small team effort. Many people have been involved. Now what I could do now is give you an introduction to the methodology of our edition or point to the many unique features in, for example, spelling or paragraphing. But all that has been done elsewhere. I'm not going to do it here. Suffice here to say is that our two guiding principles are first, that the relatively hard evidence provided by the documents, by the manuscripts, is primary. And secondly, that we set out to explain variation as the byproduct of the normal copying process by scribes who knew their scriptures very well. And with two, these two guidelines, you get pretty far in producing a good text of the Greek New Testament. I'm not going to talk about the technicalities or the details of Greek expressions or phraseology, but rather I'd like to explain why it is important that work such as this is done at Tyndale House. I mean, how does the preparation of a New Testament in its original Greek fit into the mission and the purpose of Tyndale House? Don't we have better things to do? I would like to put a few observations to you, which will help you both to understand what Tyndale is and why we settled on this major undertaking. First, and this is a very mundane but necessary point, at Tyndale House, we found ourselves in a position where we actually could do this project. We had the right constellation of people together with the right skill sets and with the right motivation. Without the right people, such project is impossible. Secondly, and more important, Tyndale House, as Pete mentioned, exists to ensure that the highest level of study of the Bible is made available to the church. We want the global church to be fed by good thinking and by thorough and solid study of scripture. Only the best is good enough in God's kingdom, and that includes the best scholarship. At Tyndale House, we provide scholars and pastors with a world-class research library on biblical studies, and do so in the context of a scholarly learning community. 
where we foster an atmosphere of rigorous study and of faithfulness to the gospel. We provide the basic tools for others to use their gifts in research, writing and preaching. And in this context, the, um, we worked on another such tool, namely a reliable text of the New Testament in Greek. Thirdly, but why a New Testament in Greek? I mean, what is at stake that Tyndall House devotes so much energy to this project? Well, if I answer this question from a scholarly, academic perspective, I'd say that now, the manuscript evidence for the New Testament shows that errors were made in copying and that there is the task to bring out the wording of the text that stands at the beginning of that long process of transmission. Some scholars will say that the situation is such that we cannot reach any certainty at all regarding the earliest wording. Others take a more realistic position. There is, though, genuine scholarly debate. And the work done at Tyndall House provides an important and independent contribution to that debate. We pay attention to details ignored by existing editions of the Greek New Testament. But if you allow me to answer the same question, not from an academic standpoint, but from a church perspective, the justification for our project becomes somewhat richer. Since the church believes rightly that scripture is the word of God, it is of the highest importance to know what the exact words of scripture actually are. A text increases in importance in proportion to the importance of the author. When the ultimate author is God himself through the apostles and prophets, we are dealing with the most important text ever given. And therefore, I am ever so careful not to say about any de tiny detail of the text that it is unimportant or inconsequential. For those people in the church who have the gift and the responsibility to study God's word in the original languages, it is crucial that they have access to the best possible text of the Greek New Testament. And best possible means that we'll have to pay attention to all those details that are often not even translatable, but may turn out sooner or later to be relevant anyway. After all, it is God's word we're dealing with. Which brings me to my final observation. And that is that at Tyndale House, we can only encourage students and scholars by being students and scholars ourselves. Just as no one would think of learning to play golf from someone who doesn't play himself, so can biblical scholarship only be modeled by doing scholarship ourselves. And the type of research project we undertake should be one that provides others with the tools to do better scholarship themselves. And that is why our work on the Greek New Testament is such a great project within the overall mission at, of Tyndale House. Which brings me to the end of my apology. When I look around the room, I see many familiar faces. People who have spent time in at Tyndale House and have been part of that mutual encouragement that is going on there. We have been refreshed by your scholarship. I hope you have taken away something from us that goes beyond books and coffee. I also see people who have been supporting us for many years by their prayers and by financial support. Thank you so much for partnering with us in our mission to bring the unsearchable riches of God's Word to the heart of the Church. Personally, I want to thank the board of Tyndall House and also American Friends of Tyndall House for their work in making this vision possible. And especially you, Pete, um, for all your efforts and personal vision to our work on the Greek New Testament. Working with you is not just a humbling experience when you find the next typo in the text. It's also a great joy to fight the fight together. <laughs> in his mercy, our Heavenly Father has used Tindo House to, to touch the lives of many scholars and pastors directly. 
and many testimonies to that are present here in this room. And indirectly, through you all, Tyndale House has been allowed to equip many more people all through the worldwide church. And therefore we thank our God and Savior for each of you and give thanks for all the good work he has done through the feeble efforts done behind small desks at Tyndale House in a small city named Cambridge on a small island off the coast of Europe, all for his glory. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible grace and mercy. Thank you very much.